too much because <laughs> it hurts to talk but it's gradually going away they said it would take two weeks and it pretty much has so here we are thought I'd do a little checks and balances check in here see how everybody's doing let everybody know how I'm doing if anybody cares about things like that <clears throat> um I just watched a video uh, from someone I follow named Icy Mike. Actually, the name of the YouTube channel is Hard to Hurt. I'll move this up a little bit. Okay, yeah. Hard to Hurt is the name of the channel, and he did sort of a little um, audit of that stabbing that took place on a river where he had a bunch of people rafting or inner tubing down a river and there was a bunch of drunken teenagers and a drunken older heavy set fellow and what ends up happening is the older gentleman stabs someone <clears throat> i don't know if he stabbed more than one person but i know he at least stabbed one and, and at least one individual died as a result of that stabbing now if you watch as we do on, on the internets, on the social medias, you watch little bite-sized clips and you think, oh, that's what happened. That was self-defense. You know, he, he was totally justified in doing that. And if that's all that happened in the situation where you see him being shoved down into the water and being struck by these teenagers, then yeah, sure, that is a self-defense situation. And if, if I had... <laughs> If a group of drunken teenagers shoved me down in the water, I certainly would come up swinging uh, with weapons because I'm outnumbered. There's no doubt about it. But you got to play the tape the whole way through, folks, and you got to go back to the beginning and how did it start? The way it started was this man, this drunken, heavy set man, confronted these teenagers, came over, started grabbing them, touching them, and uh, like grabbing their inner tubes and stuff because he, someone told him that they had stolen a cell phone or something. So rather than say, oh, hey, we lost a cell phone. Do you, have you seen a cell phone anywhere? Do you, do you have a cell phone over there that's not yours? Did you find one? You know, instead of doing that, dude just rushes across the river and starts <sighs> confronting these individuals which they're a bunch of drunken teenagers. And as far as I know, I think they're athletes as well, maybe football players or something like that. So they're in pretty good shape and they're drunk. So everybody's drunk. So adding that to the mix doesn't help things at all. 
especially since most folks do not, cannot handle their alcohol, do not know how to, how to do such a thing. Because I, I think, in my mind, this is the way I think, all right? I think anybody can do anything they want to, if they want to. Alcohol is a drug, by the way. I don't know why people say drugs and alcohol, because alcohol is a drug. It's just drugs, all right? So if you're going to do that, that's whatever. I don't, I'm not here to tell you what to put in your body or what not to put on in your body. What I am here to do is to tell you that by you putting something into your body, if it alters your condition of state so much that you basically have no control over your actions and you act like an idiot, a fool, it causes to you to behave in ways that you normally wouldn't and so therefore you start causing other folks problems now it's an issue now I have an issue with you doing that okay lots of people out there can have a drink or something and uh, never behave any differently or whatever it is they choose to do they don't really behave any differently There's, they're still the same consistent person you get these people who <laughs> anyways you know what I'm talking about I think you know what I'm talking about, what I'm getting at here. If you're going to get out of control doing these types of things, then someone is going to check you. Someone is going to check you. You're going to get checked somewhere along the way. And unfortunately, in this river incident, someone did get checked and they ended up passing away because of it. So here's the moral of the story as far as I'm concerned. How hard is it to shut your mouth and go on your merry way? Why do people feel the need to monologue about something, to explicate something? They got to make sure that even people they disagree with, they don't like, people they're arguing with, they want the other party to know their side of the story. They want to be heard. Why? Who cares, folks? Who cares? Why is it important to you that I understand your position? Especially if we don't agree. Why is it important? It's not important for me that you understand my position. I mean, as a correct sentence structure tutor, all right, I don't go around knocking on doors wanting people to understand why I do what I do. If people want to learn it, they can come to me and ask me questions and I'll answer them. But I don't, I'm not going to force you to know why I do what I do. I don't care. Really, honestly, I don't care if you know or you don't know. The only thing I care about as far as in the context of this is that if you have questions, if you are interested in learning this grammar... I'm here to answer your questions. That's who I'm going to concentrate on. So I'm not going to be the type of person to, first of all, take someone's word <laughs> that someone else stole a cell phone. You got to get the whole story, folks. You got to get, especially when drunk people are involved. You got to get the whole story. course the best time to make decisions is, is when you're drunk of course everybody knows that everybody knows that I mean if, if you make any type of momentous decision in your life it's probably best to have a couple bottles of liquor in you before you do that I'm kidding folks seriously not being serious at all being very sarcastic at the moment and this is society this reminds me of uh, a video I was watching of a street guitar player, a guy that's on the street in Canada, supposedly the most dangerous street in Canada. Hilarious to me, as if his street's any da more dangerous than the east side of Detroit. I mean, come on, folks. Or Philadelphia, Kensington. I mean, some parts of Mesa, Arizona, and Phoenix. And Glendale. Come on, folks. 
there's always a badder street than your street. But anyways, the point I'm making is this dude is uh, playing guitar and his camera catches another fellow harassing a girl on the street as the dude's playing guitar. So the dude has his head down. He's playing his guitar. He's not paying attention. His camera is catching this. So he is oblivious, I guess, to what's going on here. And then he later on posts the video to YouTube saying, you know, watch this person harassing this girl caught on camera. So he's getting views out of this uh, unfortunate situation. So I decided to leave a comment on the video and I said, are you totally oblivious to your surroundings? A yes or no question. Yes, folks, I realize it's a provocative question in that scenario. But sometimes I just like to poke just to see what will happen. And this individual went off. Started calling me a keyboard warrior, internet warrior, that um, am I implying that he should have done something and then all of his little followers came on and said, he's playing guitar. Do you know what that means? He's putting his heart and soul into guitar. How, how can he pay attention to someone being harassed on the street when he's playing guitar? And I said, I would never tell anyone what they should or shouldn't do. But if it were me, and I'm playing guitar in the street, and I'm on the most dangerous street in Canada... I'm going to be paying attention to what's going on around me, whether I'm playing guitar or not. Folks, I played guitar professionally for four years in a bar band in some of the craziest places in the tri-state area. I've been playing guitar since I was 15 years old. Lots of bands, lots of places, lots of gigs. I know what it's like to do that. Although I have never played on the street, I've never busked like that. I have played in coffee shops and I have played at parties, biker parties and things like that. So I'm no stranger to that. I can do that or used to be able to do that anyways when I was younger. I'm not going to sit here if it's the most dangerous street in Canada with my head down like this. I'm going to be looking around at everything and everyone that's walking by me because it is the most dangerous street in Canada. Or maybe this guitar player is just so badass that he knows no one's going to mess with him, so he keeps his head down in place. Or maybe it's the mentality of like uh, one, of my, one of my children used to think that if, if they can't see you, then you can't see them. Maybe that's what this individual thinks. But anyways point of the story is this dude and all his followers just went off on me just went off on me like leaving huge comments after comments saying that uh just you know ridiculing me or whatever which is not a big deal to me i don't care regular viewers of this channel know that that, that doesn't really make a difference to me I was just looking to see how this individual would answer this simple question. Now, if it were me, if it were me, in their situation and someone asked me that, because I'm getting views off of this harass harassment situation caught on camera that I was oblivious to when it happened, if someone asked me, are you totally oblivious to your surroundings? I would have said, in that scenario, yes, I was because I was concentrating on my playing and I didn't had no idea that was going down, that that was happening. And that's all it would have been. No big deal. No need to get butthurt. No need to take it personal. Get all panties in a bunch or whatever. But this dude did get his panties in a bunch and they're still in a bunch right now. So I think I'm going to tag them in this so that they can come on and see this and uh, see what kind of interesting interactions that will lead to because I don't know if you know this folks but I, I love my wife and I both love to people watch we like to sit like at restaurants or whatever and watch people on the street watch how people what they do how they act 
their reactions. And I sort of sometimes do the same thing in comments field on YouTube and other social medias. You know, I'll say something just to see what people will do. As Gurdjieff once said, to find out the exact measure of a man, scratch them a little bit. If they are a decent, good, and kind individual, even if you scratch them, they will still behave in a kind, decent manner. But if they're a jerk, if they're egotistical, if they're insecure, then all of a sudden, they'll behave differently, like this guy. This guy, I don't know. I would never tell someone what they should or shouldn't do. But for myself, cultivating humility has been probably one of the biggest benefits uh, to me in my navigations through everyday life. Cultivating humility is key. And I can take a step back and say I'm wrong. Done it many, many times in the public. I have no problem being wrong as long as someone can uh, show me what the correct way to do it is. So, let's see. What, what else did I want to talk about in this video? I guess that's it. I just wanted to check in and see we covered stabbing, covered the guitar guy. Uh, that's about it. Hopefully, um, we'll get back to doing workshops and stuff pretty soon. And I can get my focus back and all that. And uh, I'll get everybody out there scheduled that needs to have a workshop scheduled or a consultation scheduled. We'll get back to it and get back to putting out some more videos. All right. Thank you.